Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Girl Talk at the Dan Gable Museum. On this week's episode, we had the opportunity to sit down with Faith, who is Kevin Beasley's girlfriend. Kevin was the assistant coach at Old Dominion University and was also an All-American for ODU. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy. So how has your past few days been, man? (laughs) Uh, We like to say we take it day by day and, you know, every day is a new adventure and a new day. Um, Obviously, like, before this had all happened, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Like, we're living in a pandemic. Like, we're living in quarantine and... um, Obviously, it's not as serious for us in Virginia as for some other states, like all of our families back in Michigan, so that's scary. Um, Like, our parents, our parents are both a little older, and my parents are older than even Kevin's parents, so for me, it's scary. My parents are in Florida, they traveled back to Michigan, Um, so it's just, like, that's scary, but, and then, like, we thought that that was the worst of it, and, like, that was what was so sad and we were hearing about all these different family members and friends who are being affected by this. And then we kept saying like, we're so thankful for our jobs and our lives and how, you know, great things seem to be for us. Like, yeah, it sucks that being able to go to the beach or do whatever, but it's, it's all just a short period of time and this will be over. You just got to hold strong. And then next thing you know, everything happens. So it sucks. Um, it's frustrating. It's annoying. <laughs> I got so many different words, but yeah, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? You can't, you can't do anything and wake up the next day and pick up and continue to move forward. So that's all we've been doing. Absolutely. Uh, What, so what was the first thing like that went through your mind? Like the moments after you, you found out about the program getting cut? So when it happened, I was actually on a work call because I've been completely remote since this whole thing happened, probably since, I don't know, I think it was like first weekend in March, I decided after that, first or second weekend, like I'm not going in the office anymore, I'm going to stay home. So I was on a call and Kevin was in the living room and he like came in with this panic look on his face and I was like, what is going on? And I heard Steve Martin's voice and that was like a typical call, like whatever, typical Steve call. But then I saw Kevin come in and this like panic was on his face. I was like, something's not right. Like what's going on? So I walked in there and like I had caught close to the tail end of the conversation, but all I had heard was, um, you know, we, the typical, like we appreciate everything you've done. You know, this has nothing to do with you, but this is the decision that we've made. And like Kevin just was like looking at me and I was like, what is going on? And then that's when he had said, you know, we've decided to cut the program completely. I hope you understand. Then then next thing you know, he was like, we need to get on a Zoom call in the next five to ten minutes here to tell the team. And so it was like Kevin and I didn't even have time to talk about it and, like, break it down as to what was going on. And all I, like, he had gotten off the phone and all he had said to me was, like, I'm sorry. And I was just like, what? like, don't even be sorry because, like, background, I just moved to Virginia in January I graduated in December picked up my life started a brand new career and like thinking that this was going to be our home for the next I don't know five or so years and then next thing you know yeah this is not going to be our home like things are changing so but my like my biggest concern was the guys on the team the coaches because I'm close with you know Steve I'm close with Daryl and his wife who's pregnant like there were so many different thoughts running through my head. Like the last thing on my mind was we're going to have to move and we're going to have to do this. And like, what are our next steps? I, I didn't even care about us at the time. I was concerned about everybody else around us and what was going to happen. Um, yeah. I can't even imagine. And I didn't even think of it, but I can't believe you guys found out over the phone. Yeah. Yeah, and he had said, the guy had said, I don't even remember who he talked to because we've talked about so many different people, but I think it was, like, the assistant of the AD or whoever it was had said, like, due to the times, we obviously can't have this conversation in person, and I wish I could have this conversation in person. It was, like, the typical bullshit. Like, don't, like it was so ridiculous to me. Like, you try to sugarcoat it, but like, don't sugarcoat it. Like, it is what it is. Like, 
You know what I mean? It's not going to make yeah. a difference. It, it, the conversation wouldn't have been any different in person. So yeah. The, like what? It, you, it's just, it's crazy. It, it's all crazy. So I can't yeah. even imagine. And then, like you said, on top of everything else that's going on with the world right now, now you guys have got to deal with this shit storm too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Oh man. Oh, so <laughs> do you, what, what was, how has Ke- uh, Kevin's reaction been? Um, he definitely went through like the stages, um, you know, day one, it was kind of like a, a scramble slash, I would say panic. Um, but just like wanting to help all these different guys out, having to call the recruits, like they had talked to a recruit that day, like two and a half hours prior to this conversation of everything being completely oh my gosh. gone. Like they had had this conversation about a potential recruit coming in. Um, Kevin had talked to two different athletes on the team, checking in with them. Cause you know, each of the coaches were checking in daily with different athletes to make sure their grades were up, to make sure they were working out. And yeah. And like, next thing you know, like, make sure, hey, is all, is all good? Is your family okay? Are you safe? Because everyone is at home. And then next thing you know, five hours later, Kevin's on a Zoom meeting with them all, telling them, like, listening in on a conversation um, to be told that their season is one over, obviously, with everything that has gone on, but that they're, like, they're not going to wrestle for ODU anymore. And to be honest with you, maybe never wrestle – again like for some of them I, I don't know it's scary it's really scary um the amount of kids that have called Kevin and like I, I think the most like the biggest memory I keep thinking was when they were on the zoom call with the AD and she was on it and all the coaches were on it being told that the program was being dropped and like the questions that these young kids were asking of like what what do we do like where do we go why did you do this why did you choose us I can have chosen another program. Um, and, like, just the panic. I mean, hearing, you know, Kevin obviously spoke to and said, we're really sorry, we're here if you need anything. Um, you know, Kevin, I feel like he's one of the strongest people I've ever met in my entire life, like, literally has been through enough as is in his life. Um, so for that, like, this to him – uh, wrestling has been his life, like, since he was two years old. Like, this is always known. So, um, and he kind of took a leap of faith, like, deciding that he was going to stop wrestling, um, not stop wrestling, because he, conti- he still was continuing to wrestle when he came here, but basically to buy something new. Yeah. 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 And pick up and came here back to ODU, back to where he went, and then this happened. Like, I just think it was a lot of shock and a lot of sadness like the one day he woke up and he was like I'm sad and I said it's okay to be sad like you should be sad like this is it's a loss right it's a huge loss huge um so for that like yeah I'd be sad and some days like he was angry we went for a run on Saturday together it was supposed to be like a four mile run and it ended up being over five miles and said I just couldn't stop running I was so mad and kept angry like, I'm so angry and mad um but he doesn't want to lash out either, right? Like, that's not the right thing to do. Um, and neither do I. But, like, I found that writing is, like, my outlet right now. So I found that I've written so many different emails and letters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he takes it day by day. I think we both do. Um, but, yeah, it, that's – I don't know. It's hard. It's really hard. I can't even – imagine i mean there there just aren't any words no no well on to something a little (laughs) a little less heavy um what can you tell me about how you and kevin first met yeah so we first met back when we were both in michigan uh we actually met on bumble um if you're familiar with bumble you have to uh sw- like the girl has to swipe to match and in order to match you have 24 hours to reach out we did match um 
I didn't reach out via Bumble. I followed him on Instagram, and then I had posted my Snapchat. And, of course, you know, us and how we are with social media, he added, he ended up adding me on Snapchat, and we were snapping here and there. We were supposed to go on a coffee date, um, but I – he had asked me to get coffee. I was talking to someone else at the time. I didn't think it was the right thing to do. So I was like, you know, I'm going to pass. Um, so I didn't go. And then time went on. Um, and once we did start to talk and hang out, we had both agreed that the t- like, timing is everything. Because if it would have happened then, we don't think it would have worked out as well as it has thus far with us. Um, mm-hmm. So we ended up reconnecting in October of 2019. 2018 2018 um and yes yeah, so we got in contact he had asked me if I wanted to come over and watch scary movies like over snapchat and I was like what, what is this like how old are we but okay <laughs> <laughs> and so I I went and we hung out um it was very casual like no big deal um, he like sat on the other side of the couch too. So I was like, this is really weird. Like why <laughs> didn't like, didn't try to make a move. I was like, is something wrong? Like what's going on? And we like, we laughed about it. I laughed about it with my mom afterwards just because I had told her about it and told her like, I'd started talking to this guy, like wasn't sure about him and told her about what had happened. She was like, Oh, your dad was just like that when we first started dating. Cause like didn't try to kiss me or anything. And I was like, is something wrong? Like when I laughed that, that night. He walked me to my car and like gave me this awkward hug and I was like, This is weird. Like this is not this is not normal. Um, but it was good, it was refreshing and then we ended up talking again the next day and he asked when he could see me again and we saw each other two days later, hung out and then just continued to hang out every day after that, um, or as much as we could. I was going to school at Eastern Michigan, um, so I was close I was commuting, but I was close to U of M. Um, and he was back doing his fifth year technically and finishing up um, his master's then. So nice, yeah. Uh, that's uh, really funny how he didn't try to uh, make a move on you. <laughs> and he gave you an awkward hug. It was. It was interesting. I was like, this is this is different. I mean, it was. I was kind of caught off guard, but then I was even more intrigued. Of course, like any girl would be, like what's going on? Like what's the deal with this guy? So. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, uh, it, he always sealed the deal there by, by doing uh-huh. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So what can you tell me a little bit about y'all's decision to move from Michigan to Virginia? I mean, that's a big, big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So for him, it was obviously say easier because when Steve had called him back, um, it's funny, we were just laughing about this almost a year ago, a little over a year ago, around this time, uh, he, Steve had reached out to him about a potential job opportunity, um, you know, kind of getting a feeler, what he thought, you know, and he had told Steve, I'm talking, dating this girl now, like, you know, she's a big part of this decision. And I just remember being so sad when he had told me that, like, and I had heard the conversation, I was like, this can't be happening. Like, I, like, how are we going to do this? I'm in school. I still have, like, a good almost year left. Like, that's a long time. Um, But I don't want to stop him from, you know, his dreams. And, you know, he was kind of that. He had just gotten back from Belarus and Bulgaria from training you know, he just kind of like said, you know, I'm not sure what the next steps are. Do I want to continue to train? Do I want to train and, you know, start working? And it just kind of had worked out that Steve had called him. So we talked about it and I said, um, I'm never going to stop you from following your dreams. If you want to do this, go for it. Like do it hundred percent. We'll figure it out. Like we'll, we'll make it work. And so he ended up, you know, talking to his parents and thinking about it and decided that that's what he wanted to do. So he left in May, the end of May. And then I visited for the first time in June, mid June, end of June. Um, And was like, okay, like, this is cool. We went to Virginia beach. I got to hang out at ODU for a while at the university, watch some practice. Um, 
and seeing Kevin like with the guys and coaching, I was like, okay, like this is the right decision. Like, I'm glad he did this. This is what he deserves. Um, you know, what, what, what's wrong with me moving down here? Like, let's consider it. So I had prayed about it. We had prayed about it. Um, and I said, you know, I'll continue to finish school and I'll apply for jobs here and there. I was kind of far out, you know, from graduation. I was graduating in December, so it was kind of hard. But, um, you know, I said if it's meant to be and I find a job and something comes up, then it's meant to be and that this is the right decision. So we did long distance until the end of December, and then I had applied for uh, over 100 jobs, I think. <laughs> oh, and wow. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, lots of jobs back and forth. So many interviews. When I would come down, I would try to plan the interview upon being down here. Um, that makes sense. So, yeah, and I was using his address as to where he was living um, for a short period of time there. And then we ended up getting an apartment in October. Um, and so I used that address. And so I came down for Thanksgiving and had two in-person interviews. Um, the one, the one company that I fell in love with and work for now. Um, I remember leaving the interview and being like, "This is like the company I want to work for. I will do anything." Um, I interviewed with them. I think it was on a Tuesday, and Thanksgiving was Thursday, and so they told me I probably wouldn't hear till Friday or Monday. And I was there till I was in Virginia till the following Wednesday. Okay. Um, so then I heard back from them that next week, Monday, I got an email saying that I had gotten the job. And I remember we were sitting in Kevin's office and I just started crying and screaming because I was so excited because um, it felt like forever. I mean, we were, even though it wasn't, it was six months or whatever, a little over or under six months, but still, um, you know, in the moment, like when he left in May, I didn't know, like, I didn't know. I hoped and prayed that it would work out, but you never yeah, know. Distance right? is distance is still distance. I understand yeah. that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I think it's been one of the best things that could have possibly happened to us just because it has strengthened our relationship and um, definitely allowed us to go through whatever, like anything that we go through now, um, even like what's going on right now, it's a big deal, but overcome a lot in our relationship that it's just another obstacle yeah so um we're both very strong in our faith both of our families come from strong backgrounds in religion and faith and believing that god has a plan for everything um so we both agreed that you know if this is meant to be it will work out and um that you know even everything that doing distance has made everything that has come forward and moving forward in our relationship, the closest thing to easy, in my opinion, just because um, we have God on our side and we're working through it together um, and we're walking through this journey together. So for that, like, I'm very thankful. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. That's got to give you uh, some, a little bit of peace knowing that this is just another obstacle that you guys are going to find a way to overcome um, and you'll only be stronger because of it. Definitely, 100%. And it's funny, that's what both of our parents had said, too, when um, we had went to them about everything that had happened. And as soon as they found out the news about Kevin's job, they said, you know, you guys are both very strong and you'll work through this together and God has a plan. And you just have to remember that. Um, and I think that's something that we've both always uh, emphasized in our lives is that no matter what, there is a plan out there. It's it's really hard to see sometimes, but you just have to believe that it's all going to work out and it might not seem like it in the moment and it might, it might be really hard, but, um, patience, a lot of patience. So I can only imagine that's, you put it beautifully. There's always a plan and yep. even though you might not be able to see it, it'll, uh, unfold before you. Definitely. Right. So, what do you think is something about Kevin that most people don't know? Ooh, that is a tough one. Hmm, that most people don't know. 
let me think about it. You stumped me. That <laughs> that is don't good. Know. Um, he has a huge heart. I mean, and like, I think this time with everything that has gone on, I mean, and that's a given, like he's an amazing guy. Um, I, there's so many people that have reached out and like, that's been shown to me how great of a person he is just about how many people have reached out. Um, both of us asking if there's anything that they can do to help. Um, but I think his heart and just his compassion, like, uh, and his drive, um, like most people, when they lose their job, um, they would kind of give up, right? And they would just kind of throw the towel in and say, you know what, like, I need a few days to figure this out. I'm just going to walk away from this right now and I'll worry about it, you know, in a week or tomorrow or even in a few days. But, like, that that's not Kevin. Um, and that has been shown more than anything in this whole situation. Like, as soon as everything happened, he was doing everything he could for everyone, every kid on the team, every parent, um, and even himself of what are the next steps, where do we go from here, um, so just like his drive and his heart, I mean, I've, it's, it's huge. It's really just, it's cool. I, like, like I said, this, this experience as horrible and as hard as it has been, um, it's shined so much light on our relationship and on Kevin as a person, um, that like selfishly, I'm, I'm glad just because it's, you know, it's just, it's incredible. So I guess if that makes sense, his heart and his yeah, drive no, would be my I answer. You, you're, no, I I get it. You're seeing you're seeing a different side of him, and yeah, you're essentially falling in love with that side of him too. It's beautiful. Uh-huh. Definitely, I I love it. Um, mm-hmm. Well, thank you for for taking the time, Faith, to share a part of y'all's story and a part of the crazy that's been going on. Um, in your lives outside of the uncertainty that is everybody's life right now. Um, yeah. We really, we really appreciate it. And um, the insight and the knowledge that you shared about Kevin is uh, it's, it's awesome. He, it sounds like he is going to uh, not have a hard time finding uh, another coaching job. He sounds like a phenomenal no. coach. He will be golden, no doubt. Well, thank you so much, and good luck to you guys. And Thank I you. Will- I appreciate thank it. You.